Greetings, Earthlings. As you can see by this fine physical specimen on my bench, I am playing with the cane robot today. Um, this is the villain from RoboCop 2. It may be the single best thing about RoboCop 2 by a factor of several factors. Uh, it, look, I love the cane robot, uh, played by a terrifying Tom Noonan. Uh, in RoboCop 2, uh, it was designed by Phil Tippett, uh, and this casting of Kane and his parts was a gift from Phil. Uh, and uh, I have been slowly, I got a set of castings that were all resin, and when he's all resin, he can't stand on his own. So uh, I hired one of Phil's machinists to help me out, Brett Foxwell. Brett did a bunch of machining in the feet here. Uh, and then I did a bunch more machining in the feet, building a chain of aluminum from the feet to the waist. And we now have most of that. I still have one little bit to do uh, on the leg chain. Uh, and then uh, on the arms, I must admit, I came in this weekend and I worked on the big arms. So uh, Kane has four arms. He's got two large arms and two small arms. And the large arms are, here's one of them. Oh, it's just a masterpiece. It's such a beautiful, beautiful bit of engineering. Anyway, I went in here and I swapped out the shoulder joint. I rebuilt those this weekend um, and did some work inside here. And that... This is now fully posable. I, I don't need this thing to be animatable. I don't need it to be permanent, but when you're when you're holding on to tight mechanical joints with resin, um, it's just going to slowly let go over time. Uh, and so I would have this robot that I'd pose and then slowly over the next few months, he'd sort of like droop a little bit. Now, where are we at? We are at the small arm. Um, on his right side, his small arm is a welder. Here's the business end of that welder. I know I should be showing it to you complete so that I take it apart and put it back together, but nothing works that neatly. Um, so what I've got here is I've got, and so I'm about to show you some B-roll of his feet chain all the way up. And then I'm about to show you the, uh, the right small arm chain. And I'm going to rebuild parts of that arm chain in aluminum today. That's what we're gonna get. Hopefully I'll get both small arms structure done, uh, but you know, Hard to say that that's gonna be possible. Each of these parts can take a fair bit of time. Okay. Yeah, here we go. This part and these parts are what I hope to rebuild today. It's a lot of work. This is the first piece I'm gonna make. It's a little clevis. With a uh, with a pin on it, that's what we're gonna make. Now I've got a I've got an approach to this guy that I have not tried before. Um, this is a uh, this is a three inch three eighths inch square. Uh, the main body of this clevis, and I could make this clevis and make this pin and then join them and pin them. But in fact, I'd rather do something a little more different. I'm going to uh, cut this piece out of plate as a long square piece, because I don't have any 3 8 inch square stock. Um, and then <clears throat> I'm gonna chuck it into my square 5C collet. Oh, and that's how I will turn this pin. I'm very excited about this. Now, I believe there's another one of these in the other small arm, which I have not yet taken apart. I'm gonna make three of these just in case. Yeah, and I'm I'm going to, yeah, I'm gonna make three of these. So uh, first step is the table saw. Here is the piece of 3 8 plate I'm going to utilize, yes. So I'm just gonna make a slice on the table saw like that, and that'll get me my, uh, my first pass. All right. Uh, sorry, I made the cutoff camera. Here is the piece. <clears throat> that is 3.75 by 3.65, 3.7. I'm off 5,000 in one dimension. It's fine. Fine. It's totally fine, everybody. Um, so now what I'm about to do, interesting. Huh. 
I'm debating whether or not to use the table saw to make that uh, clevis cut, but I think that's folly. I think that's a bad idea. I think that's a bad idea, Ripley. Um, what I'm going to do is... What am I going to do, Rabbit? How am I going to make that cut? See, that's about the curve of a table saw blade. But trying to feed this into the table saw, even with my rabbiting jig? I don't know. I think I gotta do this with a slitting saw, but it's gonna be multiple pat one eighth of an inch. I can do that with a... Yeah, I think I'm gonna cut one, two, three, four lengths of this. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about this. There's lots of little moving parts, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna make a couple cuts of this on the bandsaw. Uh, I found the slitting saw of my dreams. Uh, it is a three millimeter, which means it comes to 120 thou, which is just fine to replicate this because um, its mating part is a part I can adjust the thickness of. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, yeah, here we go. So I'm going to make a slice in the end of this with this slitting saw. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, in theory. go oh there's our part i'm very happy that's 120 thou opening in the middle i should be able to grab that and make that pin around the other side i'm going to make one more of these Well, in order to use my uh, 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 5C <clears throat> collet, I'm going to have to use my 5C chuck. So we're going to pull this. Uh, we're going to pull this chuck off. When I'm mounting these, I get them all somewhat set, and then I set them. Yeah, there we go. All right, so the first one, uh, this is the part I wanted to replicate. 
And here is the part that I made. Ooh, very happy with that. Um, I'll be doing some post operations on this, drilling the hole and rounding it out. But again, this whole thing gets covered. Uh, so uh, I, I know that I kind of didn't wheel you into that process, so I'm going to wheel you into it now. Uh, let's see. That is point two. Great. And I'm um, going to put this in the square collet. Come on. There we go. Okay. They also make, they make square collets. They also make hex collets. Uh, they also make uh, blank collets for holding onto material who's, you might have to make a custom collet for. All right, so tightening, taking a look, great. Uh, yes, so first pass on this is the Aloris Universal Pass. Zero is about there. About that. So uh, in cutting this off, I probably should have cut this little nubbin to length before I machine the whole thing. So now I'm going to remove it using the safest way I know how with the bands with the hacksaw. There we are. The part I wanted to replicate, and it's two replacements in progress. Yeah. A note about my centering here. Um, if this was a mission critical part, and its dimensions and its uh, stuff had to be like crazy accurate, really accurate, I would be using my um, hammer gauge and finding the center. But for a, a mark, w uh, I learned from Stefan Gotzevinter that uh, a, a loop works fabulous for getting yourself really friggin' close to the mark. Um, it's been a lovely thing using this guy. Um, so, yeah, I've got my part. It's in. I think I can start to... Drill, etc. I think I need the chuck in there. <clears throat> okay. Here are the clevises as they currently stand. I'm very pleased with how they're coming. I'm going to round these these ends on the uh, disc sander. Tapping some 172 holes here. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yep. 
Yes, I could remake this plastic part out of aluminum, but I don't see that it's super necessary. I think I can get all the gription I want on this clevis using the current arrangement and I don't have to modify it too much. That's nice. That's nice. And that's great. Yeah, that's really nice and positive. So then the question, yeah, there we go. Good. So then the question is, this guy, oops, yeah. All right, that guy goes there. Nice, great, I'll fix those later. Now that fits there and these will go over that nicely. The real issue though is that I wanna swap that pen out because yeah. Oh, oh, you just broke, are you? Effing kidding me? Hang on. Maybe I don't need to swap that pen out. Let's see here. Let's see if this does it. Yeah, see, no, here. You become unthreaded, damn it. Those are 172s, I need long ones. Um, <clears throat> That's nice. I'm pleased with how positive that is. Yeah, I got a lot of plastic meat in there to grab onto. So I'm, I'm, yeah. Did you just break on me? Damn it. I was so happy with how that was all going. to rebuild you, aren't I? That's sad. I've made a new little pin. I'm going to test fit it in here. Oh, oops, all right. Test fit. And, oh, that's not bad. I think I can take just a tiny bit off there. Good, yeah, I'm pleased with that arrangement. So now I'm going to, uh, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna pot this in there and I'm going to pin it. I need to hold this. Ah, oh, crap, did I really? Oh, come on, please don't have me have done that. All right, and then, let's see if I can rescue. I think I can rescue by potting this. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. So what I had happened, oh yeah, what I had happened was the drill bit broke off in here, which they often can in these tiny parts and I'm moving quickly. So, let's 
Let's see how we did. Happy with that. And I've got the tapped holes. So uh, that means that I should be able to put these bad boys on. Oh, wait, that one goes on the other side. Uh-huh. All right, I have a little bit more work to do here. And I did that on the wrong side again. Good, good, good. So now this guy goes into here. Oh, I'll make me a hair. Now this guy goes into there. And I think I can get all of this to play together nicely. Let's see what I can do. So then that definitely goes on to that, and I'm okay with that. But now the question is this bad boy? And the answer is, I think I have what I need to make this work. These all attach together and then this guy comes in here. And the question is, should make that part. You know, this hasn't bent too much. I think I'm going to try and make it work with the plastic. Yeah. So that means that these guys go in here like this. Wait, am I right? That is a... Hang on, no, I don't think that's right. Actually, it could be right. I'm, I'm actually <clears throat> quite happy with that. I may have to replace some of this later, but I'm not that upset about that. I mean, yeah, well, uh, some of this. Definitely gets that and come on. And I like that. Everything is moving very nicely. Where do those guys go? <clears throat> All right, Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, the right arm is done. I'm very happy. Happy with how it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The right arm is doing well. The legs are doing well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to pull the other arm off. 
It spins, right? Yep, yep, yep. All right, here we go. Oh. Okay. So center pin comes out. And then this guy comes, right? Great. And then this whole thing should just pop right off, yeah? There we go. A couple little pieces. Nice. Nice. Yeah, put that on the inside, put that on the outside. Ooh, that was efficient. Yep, that arm is now posable. Is this whole guy posable now? Holy crap balls. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, I want to tighten that up just a tiny bit. Great. And then that guy, these guys are all pretty good. Ooh, yeah, greasy, yummy. guy goes back. I missed this one. Don't. Oh. A little more. Okay, so. Yeah, see, he can reach out all of his claws. <laughs> Look at how pretty he is. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see here. I think it might be soon time for me to commission Kate Sabaker to do the painting on this guy. I really might. Um, what am I forgetting? What am I forgetting? I'm forgetting his shoulder thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that goes in there. Come saw. Yeah. Oh, hello, buddy. I've long wanted you to be able to hold this exact pose. Yeah. So pretty. So pretty, Kane. So uh, Kane is posable now. I suppose he's roughly animatable. Uh, what I've talked to, to the amazing Kate Sabaker about is commissioning her to paint this guy. I know, I love painting. I love painting. It's totally true. <clears throat> but uh, Kate did the final paint job on my Blade Runner blimp. A better painter is hard to find. Uh, and a better human, indeed. Um, so I may reach out to Kate, see if she wants to take this commission. Um, and there will be more. There is one, like, last little thing to fix on this guy, and it's here in his ankles. He's missing a little shock absorber here. And the shock absorbers, all the plastic shock absorber parts are here. That will likely be the next cane build. Uh, yeah. I, I love having a platform like this with which to learn how to and practice how to become a better machinist. Um, like I said, the originals were built by some gods of machining, in my opinion. Uh, Mary Cheney, Thompson Amon, Chris Rand, and I know there's a whole 
other team, I'm, I'm sure there was like people who ate, slept, and breathed these things for more than a year. The amount of work is jaw-dropping. And Phil was right. Nobody made a toy of this. I mean, you could get the little Kubota ones that they always put on eBay and kind of like try and fool you how big they are. Like they take these really good macro shots and you think, well, maybe it's actually large. And it comes and it's like an inch and a half tall. And there's a couple of kits. And I think I own all of the toys that have ever been made of Kane. But yeah, he's beauty. He's a beautiful one. All right. Uh, thank you guys for joining me for this um, little machining excursion. I will see you guys next time.